blowers and blowers. It's around 11 on Monday. It's hotter than hell. I've been up for a while, but I've been digging in my parts bins for these parts that people are starting to buy. Uh, as you guys know that I tore down my Agway lawn tractor, which is which I call the Hurricane Isaias tractor. I tore it down the other day and uh, took all the parts that I wanted to keep, listed them all on eBay, and sure enough, uh, I've got like three sales already for the steering column, the steering section, shifter plate, you know, crap like that. But whatever, you sell enough of it, you know, the money adds up into your PayPal account, you know? Use the money in a PayPal, PayPal account so I can buy other parts for my current projects. Uh, I guess you're wondering why I have this Craftsman 523 track drive snowblower out. Well, I list things all on my let go, my Facebook marketplace as well as Craigslist year round. Whether or not people want it or not, if it's not out there, people don't know that it's available for you to buy, you know? You never know. People are looking for some great bargains, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you what a great bargain this is. So, you guys know this uh, snowblower. It's pretty cool. A lot of people like it because of the track drive feature, right? Um, I've had about six or seven of these, and I have sold them between 300, 350. I've even sold a couple at $500, believe it or not. Yes, they were in better condition, but nevertheless, 500 bucks. So because I got that 500 bucks, I always thought that I could sell them for 500 bucks. That's not the case. Depends on the condition, depends on the size of the, tra size of the tracks. My mom has one over at her house and the tracks are much bigger than that. You guys know what I'm talking about. And that one works just great. This one works great too. I got this for free. That's right, free. About two or three Christmases ago, I drove out to New City, which is an island near Manhattan, near the Bronx, whatever, I think. You know, I had never been to New City before, but it's it's part of New York. You know, I drove over there, took me about an hour or whatever, but the uh, lady was just giving it away for free. Rolled it onto my pickup truck at the time. I had a black Ford Ranger at one time. Uh, some of you early subscribers will remember that. I got rid of it because I needed a new clutch. New clutch was like eight, eight to a thousand dollars, so it's not worth it. Sold it. Uh, anyhow, she gave it to me for free. I got it back home, and all I did was put gas in it, fired right up. Anyway, so I had this listed for the longest time for like $500. Nobody would buy it. Of course, now I slashed all my snowblower prices to like 100 bucks, 150. So this is listed for $155, and some guy wants to see it. I guess he wants to buy it because, uh, you know, there are people out there who said, ooh, tank tracks. I always wanted one with tank tracks. And then there are people who want the tank tracks to make a project. Like I saw a picture of a guy who had a Black Beauty, you know, the Murray Widebody LT Select that I have, you know, the Black Beauty. He had tank tracks on the back wheels and snowmobile skis in the front. So the picture of the Black Murray with the snowblower skis in the front, the tank tracks in the back. It was badass. Hey, maybe he wants to make one of those. Maybe. Anyway, so I took it out of my shed. Of course, it was the one all the way on the inside. So I weaseled it out of the, underneath the cover. I put gas in it, fired right up. Unbelievable. You know what? Let's try. Fuel shut off, off. Choke, full throttle. Prime it a little. white outdoors lawn tractor, bring it out around here, and I'm going to uh, power wash it, because it needs a power wash. Let's see if it starts up.
Starts up great. Nothing wrong with this track. I know it looks okay right now, but uh, there's a lot of parts there that just won't get clean. Um, one of the things about power washing your lawn equipment or any small engine machine is that you're supposed to put a plastic bag under the gas cap. You're supposed to put a plastic bag underneath the carburetor area where the air cleaner is. But this is so tight on there, not to mention it's a horizontal mouth that I'm not really too worried about it, right? And the gas cap, I didn't blow any water in the seams, just around the neck area and on the top down, you know? So hopefully it'll start later. But I'm gonna leave this here uh, for a few hours and uh, let the seat dry, everything else dry. In this heat, it shouldn't take too long because it's hotter than hell today. As you can see, after the power washing and all the dirt coming off, you could see just how bad the condition is of the paint. So uh, I almost feel like we might have to paint this whole thing, you know, not just touch up. Um, I should have taken the foot pads off, but I was too lazy because I have to take the foot pads off when I paint them, you know, so I could have just power washed everything. Uh, the, the engine is just about the only one that cleaned up nicely. Engine looks really nice. And yes, I did try to clean that at, at that area too, but it wouldn't come off. I sprayed everything. Uh, this side of the side fender looks really nice. This side, not so much. That stuff just won't come off, you know? So uh, it definitely needs a paint, paint job for sure. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this tractor. After all, we got it running, driving, and mowing, starting in one day yesterday, stokage. So uh, now I think I'm going to head on over to Home Depot. I'm going to bring some paint chips with me just so I can, you know, match up the paint and see if I can find something close to it. Since I'm going to paint the whole thing, I don't have to match it exactly perfectly. Well, of course, when I'm near, uh, near Home Depot, I got to go and get McDonald's. I got swindled because I usually get my large chocolate milkshake, but they said they didn't have any. So I had to order a uh, slushie and they charged me the same price. Definitely not cool. Anyway, so I went to Home Depot. Got a can of regular white. Because I have that uh, quick color 98 cent white, that, that doesn't cover well at all. Like I'll need three cans just to cover, you know? So I might as well just get the regular Rust-Oleum gloss white. This is good. I also remembered that my uh, Jamal Alatet, I missed some spots. Got two more cans of 98 cent quick color, gloss black. Now, Home Depot did have the burgundy, and I was ready to take it and go and pay. And then I walked by another area, 
and they had cranberry. I compared the cap color, right? To the color of the paint chips that are scraped off the tractor. And this matched much better than the, uh, than the burgundy. So this cranberry is a more vibrant color than the burgundy. You power wash a lawn tractor. You always wonder, should I have covered up the gas tank and the carburetor? Would water get in there and now it won't start? We're gonna find out. This seat is still saturated with a ton of water. Let's see if it starts. By the way, one of my subscribers told me that I should use Regal Red. I saw the Regal Red. Regal Red is red. This is not red, it's burgundy. So no, I'm not gonna use Regal Red because it's not red. From a close-up shot of the color here is my cranberry it's identical identical got to remove this stuff over and can you believe four three-eighths bolts to hold this one ounce piece it's a little overkill don't you think four three-eighths bolts to remove the cup holder So my friend Nick the Mailman 
just came and dropped off an Echo Weed Whacker. His cousin didn't want it, so he brought it over to me after work. I have taken apart the top part of the hood. That part where you saw the sides, that is actually the uh, plenum on the inside, the air isolator. Anyway, as you can see, it is burgundy color, at least molded that way. And then the sides, because they're exposed to the sun, has turned it pink. So I will paint just the sides of that burgundy. And now I'm going to spray just the top part of that hood because it was easy to uh, disassemble and take the headlight lenses off and the headlights, the bulbs, and the reflective chrome thing, plastic thing that comes off. I'm just going to go over this real quick with white. This covers up nicely because this uh, paint is Rostolian. Not that cheap stuff that I get. So the coverage is very good. You can see I'm wearing some old socks so I don't paint my feet white. I really should close the door because you can see the wind is kind of blowing the, the white. At least this way it blows it towards it. Got this thingy here. I don't know what that is. Can't mess with it now. Looks pretty good. Now I'll just do the sides here. There's a spider that was crawling out over there. That's it, and we want the sides. So I've been at this for a while, maybe two hours. You know why? Because I always like to open up a can of worms. I say can of worms is because I was just gonna scrape off some of the flaky paint that's on the rust, right? But then this is the machine where the paint, I don't know, you scrape a little, you keep going and you end up scraping the whole piece off and then you scrape a little bit here and a little bit comes off and then you got to keep scraping you know and so I end up scraping the whole damn thing pretty much you know and it took a long long time and of course this seed is still drenched with water so water keeps dropping down here keeping it wet so you can't paint it because it's wet there all the time you know 
So I gotta wipe this all down and stuff. So unfortunately, I think this paint project is gonna take two days. Crazy, right? Cause I'm just waiting for like the water to dry, you know? I guess uh, power washing is kind of like going to the beach and playing in the sand. Water gets everywhere, just like sand gets everywhere, you know? I'm gonna loosen this bolt here and this bolt here so I can stick like a cloth underneath it for the masking to cover up this black part. And then I'm just gonna spray over this panel and the other panel white. And tomorrow I'm gonna paint the deck and the body burgundy. It has to be split into two. Then I have to fix the seat tomorrow too. So as you guys see, I've masked off everything with the exception of the bottom part of the hood. We call these the side fenders. As you know, I've already painted the top part and the middle plastic contrast plenum, which was in burgundy. The top was in white. And now I'm just gonna paint this hood white. Now this side is actually really good, but I, this part is not that good. So if I have to paint it all white, I gotta paint this white too, even though this side is, is good, you know? Because the paint is not gonna it's not gonna match because this has probably been sitting around for 10 years in the sun, so it's faded white. Even though it is in good condition, it's gotta be the same color, you know? So uh, there's a lot of work to prep this stuff, you know? Um, so I'm gonna have to paint the body tomorrow, but at least uh, we can finish the the hood, you know? So here we go. And the wind is kind of blowing, so this is kind of going to mess me up a little. I was fortunate because the sticker that says uh, LT1650 pulled right off. So I'm just gonna, I pull both of them off and I'll just stick them back with some adhesive spray when this is all dried. That way I don't have to go through the trouble of masking it off, you know? And this white really looks nice. Really looks sharp. But, you know, with a white tracker, it's gonna get dirty very quickly. But, with, any, with anything, as long as you rinse everything off at the, when you're done, it'd be nice. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. That looks nice. Looks really nice. All right. We're pretty satisfied with the hood. The hood's gonna look great. I don't know about the body, but that's a little piece of it there. Thanks for joining me on part uh, two, prepping and painting the hood. Stay tuned tomorrow for uh, part three of my finishing the paint job. We're going to fix the seat tomorrow too. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.